Hi, friends. Thanks for joining us. Smash that subscribe button. The, the channel has grown so much in the past month or so, and we can't thank you all enough. Benny, where can they find us on social media? Yeah, you can find us. We're at Ray Benny Sports. We're on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everyone's favorite TikTok. And uh, check us out on Reddit and leave us a rating on your favorite podcast provider. This is a CFL heavy episode as they all are. But we're going to start off with the Bombers and the Lion review, Lions review, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And let's get out of the way. This is the out of the way. Without a doubt, BC was tired. They had a well, less week. Bomber had, Bombers had more days of rest. So yes, fine. That's out of the way. And yes, they don't have their number one starting quarterback. Okay, BC Lions. Bombers still put a 50-burger on the Lions. Let's start off with the good. What do you have for good? Uh, yeah, I know what you're going to start with. So go ahead. Yeah, you know what we've we've pan, not panned him a lot, but we've kind of been on him about his offense and his play calling and all that stuff. I'm going to give a, a good to Buck Pierce and his play calling, um, and then on offense executing that play call, uh, calling very well, um, yeah. especially early in that game. They came in with a game plan. They had a game plan. This is what we're going to attack. We're going to attack them deep. They found something in that BCD, and they went at it, and, and yeah. they never looked back. And they they had won that game basically in the first quarter. You don't, you, you never saw any form of life really with BC. Even if they tried to get back in the game, they had drives. The bomber yeah. D would be like, okay, that's enough. Kick a field goal, you know? So bomber offense, Buck Pierce, Zach Laurels, you know, Kenny Lawler, all good. I think BC thought what I thought would happen in the game. I think BC thought bomber would play bully ball, run the ball and try to get some momentum that way. And yeah. it's funny because the bombers did play heavy set early. Like they played, that's a penalty they got in the first play of the game where they backed them up to the five yard line because the tight end was not on the line. I was like, oh, they're playing heavy early, which is great, which I cried for for weeks and weeks and weeks, but they effed up the first play. But then they go on and they have a huge pass to Wolitarski and then a long bomb to Schoen, both out of the heavy set. So you know what? Play the heavy set. That is my favorite shit in the playbook. Buck Pierce, use it. Use it until you grind the other team into the ground because it works. Like, look at the receivers they have out for that. Lawler, Schoen, Dembski, and Wolotarski. That's a strong four receivers. That's strong enough against any secondary. And then you have an extra blocker to, to give Caleros time. And you have Oliveira coming out of the backfield. Like, I'm so happy they started with that formation and they smashed BC with it right away. Like on that Dalton Schoen touchdown. It was beautiful. Yeah, well. So I can't complain about them not using the heavy set this week. Six uh, offensive linemen in the game for five of their six touchdowns. So I think the only one was the one by uh, Prukop or Drew Brown yeah. uh, later in the game. That was so, crazy. So yeah, so they they had that plan and and they I mean they kept the line kept Colorado's clean right no sacks this time compared to seven last time Matthew Betts um, non-existent basically in this game. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think I heard his name once. I was no. in stands, but I don't they think I heard anyone talking about him. They talked about him a bit on TV, but not good things. I mean, he hadn't done much in that game, so. Jeez. And, and also with the extra time that you're giving Caleros, it gives the receivers an extra bit of time to do those second moves and get the separation that you saw on those long bombs in the running game, averaging 7.2 yards per carry. Uh, Brady Oliveira was 6 point something, but the running game is total 7.2 yards per carry. That's crazy. Good for yeah. them. Good for that old line. Well, and then yeah, you got your receivers. You got Lawler at 200 yards. You got Schoen at 137. Um, and Dentsky ended up with 62, but still had five catches in that game, too. Um, yeah. and then Wolotarski, the only one who didn't end up getting a catch, I think that was Rashid Bailey. Um, who ended up did he get the touchdown or he, he got, got one touchdown, one catch, one touchdown. But was that the one that ended up getting called back? I thought he had a, he had a carry seven yarder, didn't he? No, Rashid, no. He ended up he ended up having a carry, but no um Oh, no receptions from whatever. I thought got Bailey today, got so. that touchdown. No, that's so, right. That's right. Yeah. And then the one called back that Claros ended up losing. But yeah, Claros three touchdowns. You know, and so oh, that's crazy. And yeah. also shout out to Buck Pierce for using five different ball carriers. Like the amount of confusion and motion that led to that really put BC on their heels rather than them be able to attack the line and be so ferocious and and uh, and aggressive. On their defense, it forced them to really take a look, be reactive, and by the time the play was on, it's too late. You had a receiver way behind you because the DBs had their eyes caught in the backfield, or you had a big hole because the DBs and linebackers' feet were, were on the ground because they didn't know where the ball was going. So again, shout out to Buck Pierce and the motion and the use of different ball carriers. I really like that. 
this is the offense that I was expecting at the beginning of the year. You know, that one that cannot be stopped. It could go out and score 40, obviously 50 points kind of thing, you know, or 30 to 30 to 50, somewhere in that range, right? That's crazy. A good offense that could tick. And now they got Lawler back, and maybe that's what they're kind of needed um, to get that star receiver out there. Because he was, he, you know, he won a couple nice jump balls out there. Um, Absolutely. Got open on a few other plays. Uh, got dinged for a pass interference call. Uh, which he did not like. So, you know, I didn't like that. Yeah. So he, he could have had way more than 200 yards. So let the guy play football, man. Like, yeah. come on. Uh, notice we haven't even talked about the defense yet. <laughs> and this was like the first time, not the first time early on the season, but still they're allowing a lot of points. But the dark side really loomed heavy in this one. No offensive touchdowns allowed. Yeah. You know, Demario Houston with another pick. Are you kidding me? Brandon uh, that Alexander defense. as well. He was all over the field, just yeah. making Evans and Davis reconsider their decisions. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, and, and then the, great. the hits on Evans, Big Hill's hit on Evans. Unfortunately, uh, Evans got hurt or yeah. wherever it happened there. I, I think he was probably getting pulled at some point anyways because he wasn't having the greatest game. And they got him yeah. after him early, and they were t- giving him shots, and they got him out of that pocket running around, and he was already scared. Yeah. He was missing passes downfield to open receivers already. Absolutely. Um, and then to me is that big stop in the first quarter on third down um, that led to, you know, the Bombers getting up another touchdown after that. So, yeah, D, D played well, you know, and they didn't really have to in this game necessarily, but they still came out and they balled. And, you know, and if it wasn't for the offense kind of getting lax at the end, there probably wouldn't have been another touchdown in this game for BC. Yeah, you talk about that stop and and guys who don't get a lot of shout out because they're not in the stat line really heavy. Uh, Ricky Walker. He's yeah. is disruptive on that line, taking up a lot of space. Not a big guy, not a big guy, but he takes up a lot of space and he's a wrecking ball. And the Bombers have kind of had a lot of luck with these small guys that could really cause havoc. Jerome Haywood. And then they had the stove. What's his name again? Richardson. Yes, Stevie Richardson. And now this guy, again, he's, he's, he's a little bigger than those guys. He's not as stocky, but he's a smaller guy that just causes havoc on the D-line. And that also frees up the Jeffs, Jeff Coat and Jefferson. So, wow. Yeah, sack for Jeff Coat, sack for uh, Thomas. Nothing for Willie Jefferson, although he got dinged on that penalty too, where he lost his sack. So. <laughs> can, uh, can we go then to the bad? Can that be a segue to the bad, or do you have more good? Let me just point out Kyrie Wilson and Winston Rose both coming into this game as well um, and excelling and playing very good and not looking at a place or looking like they haven't played in a year or whatever it's been, especially for Kyrie Wilson. It's over a year. Winston Rose, maybe not that long, obviously, but but they they didn't look at a place, you know, and they fit right into that D. And Winston Rose was taking Whitehead head on. Yeah. And he, he, he played him well. Those guys only had those short routes, really. And those yeah. DBs were right on it. Uh, oh, so let's one start- more. Let mm-hmm. me say, because we get on him too, Jamison Sheehan had a pretty good game as well. Only four yeah. punts his game. One was at least 55 yards. So yeah, he pinned the BC back a couple times. Good for that young man. Yes. Still getting used to the game. <laughs> young man. He's like, what, 30-something? Oh, how old are we? <laughs> Older than that, I guess. <laughs> let's talk about the bad, uh, about that sack, the review on the horse collar. I don't know who is up in that bomber play replay booth replay booth but that was a pretty clear call from section 112 row yeah. 26 seat 7 i saw it from there so i don't have no idea what what that review was about yeah i think uh what o'Shea ended up saying is he there was a lot of plays in the last game or i guess i think it was against bc where he didn't end up challenge or challenging where he probably could have ended up winning um mm-hmm. so i think he felt like he almost had to do this one to me, it wasn't a typical horse collar tackle to me when I was watching it. Like, he held him back. Like, he held him, obviously, in the horse collar. But it was more like he stopped him from running instead of pulling him down kind of thing, right? So, I could see that why he'd probably challenge that. But, yeah, you're going to lose that usually. So, Letter of the law is grabbing yeah. the back of the jersey or the pads. Yeah. Well, yeah the unfortunate the thing is he didn't even probably need to do that because he would have got ended up getting sacked anyways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's one of those bang, bang. You're in the moment. You just grab and son of a gun. Yeah. Uh, you get a penalty. It was a great play by Willie Jefferson. Always, always noticed on the defense. Uh, you have any more bad? Um, I've got a couple more bads. Yeah. Our, our punt returns, kick returns, uh, just without Janarian Grant has not been good. I don't blame yeah. McRae altogether because that's not his normal position, but not good. And then on the flip side, uh, they gave up some pretty good runs to Terry Williams uh, yeah. uh, when he was kick returning or punt returning. He had, uh, what did he have? 
six. He was six uh, of 195. His longest was 62 on a kick return and a punt. One of the punts that he ended up getting a return. It was 35 yards. So they got to clean that up a bit. Yeah, it's a ride to piggyback on that. Uh, shout out to at Far Side 1951 on YouTube for noticing McCray isn't as confident on those punts. And I think no. that's true. Uh, yeah. There was that also, you know, when I saw him earlier on, just wasn't finding holes. And But there was that one later on in the game where he kind of bumbled it. And I was like, uh, you know what? At Far Side 1951 is correct. He's not that good at punts. And maybe it's just about getting him comfortable with it. Yeah. Because I don't know. Have you heard how long Grant is out for? Uh, no, because he was just put on the six-game injury list. So and I, I don't fully no, understand no. that six-game injury list because you can come off early. So Exactly. <laughs> there's no penalties. Or maybe there's no. – oh, we don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, something something has to get better there. And I, I think we mentioned the coverage last week, but I think uh, um, McCray's, McCray's game needs to get polished. Not, yeah, not knocking his game, no. just more more reps. There is there is definitely a few times where he's not catching that ball cleanly. You know, yeah. it's more than once, and it's just that that delays him from even you know looking up field and finding that hole. So, and those that's one of those things you really can't simulate in practice. No, when you have guys coming down the field that want to take your head off, your boys on the team aren't going to do that. No, you know that. Yeah, so that pressure's not there, and you don't have all these people watching you out at the same time. Oh no, yeah, you got thirty thousand people watching you, <laughs> waiting for 30, you to drop it. Thirty thousand eight hundred forty-seven, I think yeah. it was. Now they're good crowd, man. Ooh, sheesh. <laughs> Do you have any ugly? I, I guess I'll just throw them into the ugly because we've seen it before with the offense kind of getting a little bit lax later in the game. You know, the Kalaros interception in this game, just a bad play altogether. You had Oliveira there. It just, it seems sloppy. Um, and then to me, Oliveira's fumble that led to a BC touchdown again. It happened in the Ottawa game. Same thing, a Kalaros interception and then a, a Oliveira fumble, or, or maybe it's the other way around. But you know, it's just having that lead and trying to kill the game, right? Mm-hmm. You've got to be focused still in, the, in those moments. They did it against Hamilton as well this year. So just like to see them clean that up a little bit. And, and on the Oliver, Oliver fumble, again, like the Ottawa one, he was like on a pure run. Yeah. It wasn't like in a pile where guys are all over him. He was yeah. on a run, uh, full speed. Uh, so just something that I'm sure he noticed. He was cussed about it a little bit after the game. He realized that he's on himself. but we. You gotta mention it in the bag because it's yeah. not good. He got, he got the touchdown on the next series, right? We were texting each Redemption. other and just like, yeah, so 27 yeah. yarder, 28 yeah. yarder. And he just he you knew he just wanted to hit somebody. He didn't get touched, I don't think, at all, but he was ready <laughs> to run someone over. So. And that's another thing we talked about last week. The uh, yards, yards before contact. They yeah. need to really get that up. And they obviously got that up with Oliver on this game. He gets averaging like six point something, and they he only ran the ball six times or something. Yeah, it wasn't nine a lot, times, so. nine times. So. Oh, geez. Yeah. Ugly. You have any ugly other than the BC performance? Uh, no, that's it for me. TDs, Dane Zeppin gets hurt. D line. Oh, that's Vernon cool. Adams being the third stringer and not dressed and then dressing at halftime. You know what? <laughs> ugly. You know what? Ugly. We've said this many times this year. Can the CFL and that dumbass genius sport get their stuff together oh, with the stats? Why? Why are stats still on PDF? What yeah. is that? What yeah. is that? Like, come on, for people who actually want to follow stats or want to do fantasy and what keep up with what's going on and what just happened, we have to go through these PDFs showing top three. You can't. That's ugly. That's ugly still. Yeah, and and the popularity of the NFL is the is fantasy football. Quite a bit of it is fantasy football. Bringing in the really the non fans, the guys that don't have a favorite team necessarily, or girls uh, yeah. that have favorite teams, but they watch all the games because they got a fantasy football team, and they do want. You think if there was no stats for them to look up and keep track of how they're doing in fantasy football, they wouldn't be losing their mind right now. That's crazy. And that's where the CFL is dropping the ball. They have fantasy football stuff, but you can't even look to see until the game's over the next day. Oh, this is how this good this player did kind of thing. It's like, yeah. Or we get the injury report the day before saying, oh, this person is hurt. And we have no information on the backup or no. It's it's ugly. Yeah. And we're into August. We're halfway through the season here. Didn't they say July, July, mid July, it'd be all running. Hell yeah. Come on, CFL. You know what? Maybe put expansion on the back burner for now if you can't do two things at once (laughs) figure out statistics i'm gonna cuss fans bomber fans bc fans also put your thoughts on the game the review the good the bad and the ugly thanks for all your contributions last week great comments 
let's go on to team grades. Let's start with Winnipeg. Okay, they got an A. Total team effort, not perfect, but against a team like BC, very uh, impressive. Would have given them an A plus if the BC team would have been fully rested and they're playing their number one QB, and they kind of got the same result. But I'll give them an A for that. Yeah, um, can't wait for October 6th because that'll be a great game, uh, the uh, tiebreaker in this all. And hopefully both teams are healthy, right? Getting Lawler back was huge for the Bombers in this one, not having Vernon Adams. Although I don't know if Vernon Adams would have fared as well um, that he did the first time when he had hours in the backfield to look downfield and find open receivers, right? He would have been a little bit more under pressure. I'm sure he would have done better than Dane Evans did, but um, I'm giving BC an F. Um they got beat in all phases pretty much of this game. The D got yeah. exposed. Maybe like you're saying, they're a little bit tired coming off a short rest and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see in, in October who is uh, the better team. I can't wait for that matchup. That's huge. You go watch that on TV. It's going to be a late one. Yeah, and that should be the battle for first. I can't see any other team battling these two teams for first in that West. Shoot, that's an old school. Man, I might listen to that on the radio under the sheets on that night for old school. Can we bring back a, Bob Irving for that one? That's the deal. I was about to say it's not going to be <laughs> Knuckles, son of a. Let's go on to uh, Calgary. I'm going to give them an A as well. Uh, they got Mills going and they committed to it. You know, that's a blueprint they got to stick to. It was both you and I were mind boggled as to why they didn't continue that with the Bombers. And they continued that on this game against the undefeated Toronto son of a gun. The football gods do have a sense of humor <laughs> and they took away that seventh in a row from Toronto. I, sh- oh, I was questioning that and I should have went with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, Calgary can be a factor throughout the year if they do limit their mistakes. They're a physical team. Uh, and, and if they don't put it on Meyer shoulders, they can survive and they might break a heart or two. But uh, I'll give him an A. I agree. They have to, like, 36 carries for Dietrich Mills um, on 160 yards. So that's, yeah. they obviously leaned on him there and didn't lean on Jake Meyer to win this game. And that's where I think they kind of, and I think it was hard for Dickinson to not let his quarterback do what he, you know, what Dickinson used to do. You know, you got to rely on that other part of the game. Um, I'm going to do the Argos a D. Uh, unfortunately, Chad Kelly went down. Um, the Argos seem to have played it safe by taking him out, kind of mentioning that he could have possibly came back in and he's not as hurt as they're kind of letting on. So, yeah. Um, but again, we questioned where Toronto would be if Chad Kelly got hurt because their backups are no experience, right? Cam Dukes came in and, and for them, they abandoned almost that run game. Andrew Harris had one carry. The bread right? and butter. You know, and I, and I don't know if you, you had mentioned Olet maybe left this game for a bit. Um mm-hmm. So, but they they didn't didn't help Cam Dukes. Uh, you know, he still threw 15 times, and I know you were down, but it was only 20 to seven or whatever it was. Absolutely, right? and they saw um, the other good Canadian running back yeah. too. So I'm surprised they kind of abandoned their running game, but not a good week for the Argos. I'm gonna call an audible here. Surprise, surprise! I'm gonna move the Chad Kelly question up to right now. If Chad Kelly were to miss an extended amount in time, where would you put the Argos in the power rankings? it's hard to say because so many teams are still so bad um you know yeah. um but i would definitely take them out of the top two um i would still probably leave them at least three to four until i can see what cam dukes kind of looks like because to me none of these other teams have done anything to to make me go ooh, look out yeah yeah um Montreal is kind of making me say, ooh, look out, especially if they get fully healthy and with the signing of Sean Lemon, like we'll get into their thing in a bit. Uh, but I'm going to put them at six, around ish, six, five or six. I, 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 you know, sure, Cam Dukes might be good, but from what I saw, from what he offered, no. I don't get any sense that he's a suitable backup to keep the team at the level of play that they want to be, even with extended amount of time. But hey, practice, right? Yeah practice so yeah i'm gonna have them around five or six in the power rankings there if chad kelly is out for extended amount of time sounds but, sounds know, like he's not sounds like he may miss this week's game and then they got another buy <laughs> their third buy already <laughs> so he may be back after that so he only made he missed one game so that's not good for late in the year <laughs> no. when it gets cold Jeez. at all uh let's talk about their rivals the tiger cats i'm gonna give them a d they are playing horrible after all those signings, the O-line is non-existent. The D-line is uh, underperforming in a huge way. Uh, the team folded in the second half. Where's the coaching? Like, yeah. Powell looked good, getting 170 yards almost, and then he got like 30-something in the second half. Uh, uh, it's 
it's horrible. Like this falls on Steinauer's plate, and unfortunately, the offensive coordinator mutually parted ways, Tommy Condell. Uh, but the guy doesn't have a QB to work with. No. no. Steinauer. You know, and this really begs the question, you know, let's look at these coaches who are like general managers and presidents. Who do we have? We have this guy, Steinhauer, Dickinson, and Chris Jones. Where is it successful? Stop doing it. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work out too well. It's too many hats to be wearing in this situation. Yeah, that's that's a D for me for the Ticats right now. I'm going to give Montreal a C+. Plus. Um Offensively, they didn't get it going until later. Uh, their defense, though, was <laughs> on top of it. Um, Montreal's first four drives, interception, missed field goal, interception, 2-0. and out. Hamilton could not take advantage of any of that. They only scored seven points out of any of that. So, yeah. again, maybe that's why Tommy uh, got fired there. But, uh, but again, you got Powell, who's what? Third stringer? Fourth stringer? Third stringer, right? Anyways. Ricardo had a third. decent <laughs> night later on, stats-wise, like later in the game when the offense kind of woke up. So the D saved Montreal here. You know, yeah. I kept them in this game, and then the, the offense finally got two late touchdowns. Uh, Standback finally got it going, going over 100. Uh, Austin Max still having a wicked season, another over 100 yards for him. So Montreal's got the D. They got the D to keep them in games. Um, that offense has to figure out maybe a little bit sooner if they want to compete with the likes of, say, BC or Winnipeg and Toronto with Chad Kelly. You know, Montreal, I am, I'm not going to jump on their bandwagon, but things are looking up for them, I think. Uh, I don't think their offensive line allowed any sacks in this game, uh, which is encouraging. William yeah. Steinbeck is getting more yards, which is encouraging. And they still put up 24 without one of their best receivers. And we knew their defense was good. So Montreal ain't no joke. Yeah, you know, three, not, uh, three sacks, a fumble recovered in two interceptions. And speaking of Sean Lemon, caused a fumble, two sacks, and intercepted in the fourth quarter. Lemonade. So, Great, great, great night and i'm i don't know why it took so long for a team to freaking sign this guy maybe he inspired the offensive line maybe shoot <laughs> uh did we go through all the grades nah, no we got uh, one more saskatchewan there ottawa <laughs> there you go making sure making sure making sure uh saskatchewan they got a c from me uh i'm glad they stuck with fine but the coaching is just not good if this was any other team they might have lost to the elks this week yeah. Uh it was like uh, the coaching. Uh my goodness. And good for the kicker for hitting one. He was like yeah. 0 for 4 on over 50 and he got a 54 for the winner. So yeah. good for them, but they didn't look good. No, and that gamble late in the game on third down on your own 20. I and some people say, hey, it was the right call or whatever. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh you ended up really? getting lucking out, but I would have punted that ball deep and had your defense try to stop them more than Absolutely. anything especially the way crumb had been playing really right he wasn't having the best of games so you think he's gonna no. drive 80 yards or 50 yards or 40 yards whatever it was so no um i'm gonna give ottawa a d um and i would almost feel like slipping it down to an f just for bobby dice's call to kick a field goal from the one what did herm edwards say you play he to win the game you play to win the game bobby dice played not to lose this game and he lost yeah you know i don't i don't even care if you didn't even get it they still have to get out of their end zone and get a bunch of yards to get out of there and not give you the ball back in great field position a whole bunch of yards yeah i know they got stopped earlier like in that fourth quarter on a third down sneak but come on man you got to grab this by the horns and you got to punch that thing in um Especially with a team, you I don't know, give that confidence to to the Red Blacks, right? I don't know. I don't like it. I did not like that play, and I was yelling at the TV. And then they kick it to Alfred. Are yes. you kidding me? Yes. And it, it, is it not that? So Saskatchewan kicked the field goal. So Ottawa at that point can decide to take the ball at the forty, right? Instead of having it, or is it different in the last two minutes of the game? If, no, because Ottawa did it. They kicked Saskatchewan. it off. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Do you have to, you have to, you have to kick, kick off? off. Yeah, but when you have Alfred, you're like, yes. do Saskatchewan I'll give... fine. I'll... Yeah. Yeah. But Ottawa then ended up doing the same. Unless they have to do the kickoff, I don't know the rules there. Because why wouldn't you take the ball at your own 40 and start from there and have to try to get 20 yards or so, 25 yards? Yeah, it's a new rule when you're within, uh, was it three minutes that you... Uh... You have to kick off? I think so. Okay. Okay. So, and we have to look at those Someone let us know changes. for sure. Yes. So, not Randy Ambrosi. <laughs> 
Uh, let's move on. James Murphy. Uh, yeah. Name to the ring of honor. Your thoughts on that. Oh, fantastic. Well time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know really why it ended up taking this long, but great guy on the field. Great guy. We interviewed him too. He was fantastic. So uh, good to see him finally getting that honor. Yeah. It, yeah that, like I said, it's about, it's about Dan time. Why did it take so long? But then I looked at the list of inductees and I think he could have made it maybe in the 2016 team, but you already had Chris Walby and Dieter Brock from the same era. Yeah. And the only guy that you might've taken out of 2016 and please don't be mad at me. Bomber fans, no disrespect is probably Doug Brown out of those. Cause in 2016, every game had an inductee. Yeah. So D- Doug Brown, just cause he was the most recent might've taken a step back, but it's hard to really take any of those other guys out before James Murphy. Yeah. And it's all uh, and, well deserved by all these guys, even Doug, like Doug Brown, especially too. Right. So it's kind of hard. It's to figure it out, but yeah. Yeah. It's quite a I, while, but I wouldn't want to make that. that he finally got it. No, and in 2016, yeah. you already had Milt Stiegel. So it's hard to put another receiver in yeah. there too. Spread uh, it around. The cards were stacked against them <laughs> and they had to put Joe pop in there before Murphy. And I don't I complain against that either. No, no. Yeah, good luck to those people who <laughs> make that decision. Uh, talking about the Bombers, next game, who do they play next? Edmonton on Thursday. And Edmonton has named Trey Ford as their starter, good or bad? A good move, but bad that it's against the Bombers first, who are playing really, really well on D, but... You, you had to do it. You had to go. To, I'm surprised it took him this long to even get the Ford. Um, you drafted this guy high for a reason. Get him in these games. See what he can do. So it's about time. Let's see what he can do. Um, and hopefully it works out next week, not this week. It can be good <laughs> for the Elks and bad for the Bombers. And this is might be this might be the last time I give any kind of street cred to the evil genius. Maybe he's thinking we have a buy now. Gives them extra time. And also, the Bombers have trouble with mobile quarterbacks that they don't have much tape on. Yeah. Crumb showed them that. So maybe this is the perfect time where you have a team that's confident, aggressive, to put this n- a little bit of unknown quarterback in there that has nothing to lose, right? Just like Crumb, nothing yeah. to lose. Uh, so maybe this is the perfect situation. Do I think that'll happen? Would I gamble that? No. No. Yeah. But I'm saying... It could be a good thing. Could be very bad. Is Eugene Lewis back at least? Is he? He's even close because that would help him, I guess. But oh, for sure that would help him. He's like the <laughs> he's a top five receiver in the league when healthy. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh my goodness, it'll be interesting. Let's... At least it's a, it's at home for the Elks, so yeah, they got to win there 22? sometime. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's go with game balls of the week. One on offense, one on defense, and one on special teams. Who are you going to give your offensive game ball to? Can I give two? Week nine. No, you can't. You got to give one. That's why it's a game ball. Because if you take two, then I'm screwed if both, if one of those are mine. I'm giving it to Kenny Lawler. 200 yards, touchdowns, uh, seven catches, just a force. And then, like we said, that pass interference, that was kind of iffy. So, wicked game for him. The guys wanted to get 2,000. His goal was 2,000 yards this year. He still thinks he can get there, possibly. I don't know sure. if missing that many games. But, hey, 200 yards in a game is fantastic. I have 10 more of those games and he's there Yeah, or nine, <laughs> nine, yeah. nine more exactly. and a little less. Uh, I'm going to go with Zach Caleros and sorry, CFL fans. You're going to say, Oh, fan homeboys. Yo, they just put a 50 piece yeah. on BC and Zach Caleros looked like he's an MOP form. He went for three sixty nine and three touchdowns with 70%. He's the dude right now in the league yeah, defense. He, he was the other guy I was going to give it to as well. Oh, sure. But and there's but, another receiver we could have given to as well on the Bombers, but I won't. Yeah. Um, just looking at it quickly, like there's no other team that scored over 30 points this week in the CFL. So how do you mm-hmm. not give the offensive player it's, to a team that put 50? It's tough. All it's on tough. offense, really, right? Absolutely. And the defense didn't score any touchdowns. Yeah, or I mean, special they had, teams. They had three field goals, I think, right? Something like that. So, oh. yeah. Defense, who's your... Uh... Who are you giving the game ball to? We giving nine. it to the Laminator. Mm-hmm. Wicked game for his game back, man. Two stacks, like I said, all his other stats earlier. But wicked, uh, wicked to see him back and be a force out there. Yeah, Sean Laminier, awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Anthony Lanier on Saskatchewan. Three sacks and was a huge factor on quelling that uh, Ottawa comeback. Is quelling a word? Quelling ah. sounds like it. Who cares? Special <laughs> teams. I don't got an English degree. Shoot. Special teams. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm going to give it to, I mentioned him earlier, Brett Lothar. Uh, four for four, made his points after, and he made that big 54-yarder uh, in the final bit of the game to to win it for Saskatchewan. So I'm going to give it to Lothar. I have him as well. I got to agree on that. Usually when a uh, kicker is hitting a 54-yarder in the CFL uh, for the win, that's a great play. So I'm going to give it to Brett Lothar as well. Okay, then mini shout out to the punter on Ottawa, uh, Leone. He averaged like 48 yards per punt and offered only gain like four yards against him. So that's some good airtime. Why don't they have the hang time ca- clock anymore? Did they have it in the CFL? I remember they had it in no, the NFL. Did in the, the NFL for sure. Yeah. Reggie Roby. <laughs> you could say Hail Mary while he think put that in thing in the air. The whole prayer slowly. <laughs> CFL fans, put your uh, what put it whatever you want in the comments. Let's go to hot topics. What's the most likely scenario to happen with Josh Jacobs? Ah, uh, I think he's going to sign that franchise tender and play for ten million. His, uh, it's it's a you know what the franchise thing is the dumbest thing in professional football. It may be professional sports. Pay the players for their performance or let them go on the market. I hate that, but he's screwed. I get the franchise thing a little bit because the NHL does it with two with the restricted free agency until like seven years of uh, NHL service, right? That's very I, different. I, I like it. Yeah, I know. But it's just a, it's one of those things where it can keep um, a player with a team in small markets. But the NFL is kind of using it just to screw these guys over, really. And so they're not using it what it was really intended for at all. Um I don't. I I could see Josh Jacob holding out at least the regular season and maybe beyond that. And maybe if the Raiders. Uh, start off slow and are struggling, especially in the run game, then maybe they go out and sign him at this point. But I don't think they can do much to help uh, to up his contract. You know, we saw Barkley sign, right? So I don't know if they can even change it much or even sign into a long-term deal at this point. So it's, I can see him sitting. Hunter Renfro is making $15 million on the Raiders. <laughs> Josh Jacobs, I think, is making oh, like yeah. 13 This makes no... I'm not Josh Jacobs. Uh, the, the other receiver. Jacoby Myers. Jacoby. This makes... No sense, man. Ugh. Yeah. It's the NFL. The and who was their best player besides Devontae Adams last year? You know, Josh Jacobs. So. Stupid. Let's keep talking about running backs because they're awesome. Who's a better fit for the <laughs> Patriots, Delvin Cook or Ezekiel Elliott? You can go. I'm going Delvin Cook uh, just because he seemed like he still has something left in that tank. Um you know, I'm kind of still surprised that Minnesota even and you know got rid of him. Maybe the contract was too much. Speaking of running back contracts, um, but yeah, I would take Dalvin Cook. I'm gonna go Ezekiel Elliott. He'd be a better fit with the Patriots. Belichick has a way with veteran running backs, and he has a way with big running backs. Like I loved how he used Legarrette Blunt. No, that's uh, true. And usually he uses his secondary running backs as receiving backs, so that can be filled for cheaper rather than pay Delvin Cook all that money. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go with Ezekiel as the better fit. I don't think he's necessarily the better running back at this time. I definitely pay Cook more, but uh, I go Ezekiel Elliott with the Pats. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Cook at this point is going to get what he's looking for, and yeah, New England won't probably pay him at all. I mean, he went to mm-hmm. Cook went to the Jets to visit last week, and, and many thought he was going to sign, but obviously he's asking for way more than any team's looking to pay him. And I thought he wanted to go to contender cook. So the Pats aren't a contender. No. Jets no. are? Well, more than the Pats. <laughs> AFC least. Speaking uh, of the Jets, though, they cut Strebler, so. Uh, come back to Winnipeg. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Who are you going to get rid of in that situation? <laughs> mm, shoot. He's going to Ottawa, isn't he? <laughs> Probably. Carlson traded to the Pens. Good move. I think it's a great move. Pittsburgh has to make this move. They can't rebuild with that core of 30-year-olds that they have. They're in that metropolitan division with Carolina, New Jersey, the Rangers, and Islanders. Might as well bring in a guy who can help score more points when you have guys like Melkin and Crosby. He's 33, and he's a younger of those guys. And and you need a little help when what's-his-name is out for a bit. Uh, Latang. Gunsel. He's, hmm. he's missing the first part of the season. So I, I like the signing, and they're, they're not giving up much. A first-rounder, so what? They're going to start to rebuild in a couple of years anyway, so I like it. Yeah, you 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 got Crosby, you got Malk, and you had Latang. You have to go all in. Like you, like you said earlier this week, or when the trade happened, last dance. This is the last dance for Pittsburgh. I don't know if it's going to work out like it did for the Bulls. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I have no problem. I like the move. Uh, Kyle Dubas is going for it and going to knock Toronto out of the playoffs at some <laughs> point. But, uh <laughs> good move i like it the hockey <laughs> gods and goddesses i oh, yeah. will 
I will offer you lots of food <laughs> if you do that. You got a shout out? Uh, you know what? Let's uh, shout out James Murphy, man, for uh, we talked about him earlier, getting inducted. Um, we we didn't end up saying any of his stats, but, you know, he ended up 573 receptions, 9,036 yards, uh, 61 touchdowns. And the one record that Milt didn't end up breaking was uh, single season receptions uh, for the team at 116. So That's plus insane. his great cups, uh, his MVP, his outstanding player award. Three-time Great Cup champion as well, right? So, yeah, all, two-time All Star. So, wicked, the best wicked, see, uh, wicked career, and yeah. wicked to watch him. Best receiver on those championship teams. Oh yeah, I'd say even when he was hurt, was he hurt in the nineteen ninety ninety? I think yeah, Great Cup. Yeah, still biggest distraction ever. Like, how can you <laughs> not have two guys on him? Yeah, and he'll go anywhere on that field to get that ball. James Murphy, go check out the interview that we have in our archives. He was such and a he, great dude. And he had some great hair, too. Oh, the Jerry curl. <laughs> what? Benny, you have anything to say to our friends? Uh, just, you know, thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget, subscribe, follow, leave us a comment, and uh, have a good week. And in the words of Herm Edwards, you play <laughs> to win the game. Bobby Dice, you play to win the game. Cut. <laughs> Fantasy football coming up. If you could pick anyone with the first round pick, first overall, who are you picking? I'm taking uh, Tyreek Hill. What kind of league is it? You know, standard, Excellent PPR, football. whatever. Probably Justin Jefferson. Whoa, you're not scared of that rookie they drafted? Nah, Addison or whatever. I think Jefferson's Ooh. still good. I mean, they had Thiel in there last year, right? Thielen's whatever. Oh, he's done, bro. He even done. The year be- even the year before, they still had Thiel or whatever. It is. Jefferson's still the guy. Still a good pick. You can't go wrong with that one no. either. No. You're not, you're not taking a quarterback in the first round? No, I always take quarterbacks later. I can't stand taking it. Unless it was like, uh, depending on type of league, right? That you needed a quarterback or maybe two quarterbacks, but I still probably wouldn't take them right away. Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Denny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.